Welcome back to another episode in my fancy white uh, studio, and I'm here to talk to you about full-size SUVs. Uh, now, obviously, there are more competitors on the market than the two vehicles you're seeing behind me, but since Nissan updated the Armada for 2021, I figured it, was, it would be interesting to pit it against one of its direct American rivals, the iconic Chevrolet Tahoe, currently the sales king in North America. Group together, Chevrolet Tahoe, Chevy Suburban, uh, GMC Yukon, and Cadillac Escalade constitute the best-selling full-size SUVs in the world. So, does Nissan have a chance with the new Armada? Well, they're quite gutsy to try because this is a segment that is dominated by American car makers. But in other markets, Nissan sells the Patrol, which is essentially that vehicle, but a bit less fancy. So Nissan figured, hey, why not? Let's bring this to North America and sell it under the uh, Armada nameplate. So what I want to know is, does it have a chance? Does it actually compete? Does it hold its own against the American juggernaut? So come with me, we'll go in detail. Again, this is not a car review like you usually see. This is gonna be a descriptive comparison between two very interesting full-size SUVs. All right, so let's begin with the Chevy Tahoe. Now, this vehicle was entirely overhauled in 2020, so it carries over unchanged in 2021. And I wanna start with the Chevrolet because when General Motors finally decided to modernize their big boys, they really didn't cut any corners. Now, this is an all new platform. GM calls it the T1 architecture. All of its new pickup trucks, full-size pickup trucks and full-size SUVs are riding on it. So what you're getting is a choice of three available engines. There's a diesel six cylinder, a 5.3 liter gas V8, and this one, the high country model. This is, by the way, the most equipped as usual, the fancy, the $95,000 version. This, is, uh, this one is powered by a 6.2 liter V8. It's good for 420 horsepower and 460 foot pounds of torque. Uh, this one obviously has the four wheel drive also on it. Now, what you need to know about these full size SUVs is that they're actually trucks. So it's it's built on a frame. Um, it's rear bias. So it's first rear wheel drive and it becomes four wheel drive. I have four by four low. I have adjustable suspension. These things are made to work. So they double as family shuttles, but also actual trucks. General Motors says that the new Tahoe can tow up to 8,300 pounds uh, when it is empty. Of course, remember when these vehicles are loaded with kids and supplies, you're not going to be able to tow as much. All right. So the interior being the high country trim means that it's really luxurious. I have nice chocolate brown leather, uh, this beautiful um, leather texture on the dashboard as well with some fancy stitching. Uh, good seating position. It is a truck, so you're sitting up high uh, to free up some space. You have buttons right here for your transmission, and that gives way to a gigantic center console right here. There's a lot of stuff you can do here, plenty of storage space in the Tahoe. First of all, I have my wireless uh, charging tray right here for my phone. A lot of room to throw some junk. I have a standard USB port and USB-C up here as well. A, a nice roomy center console. But one feature I find particularly cool when I press the button up there, you see the console will move forward and back. Now, why would you need this? Well, the cup holders by moving backwards, they give more room. They're more easily accessible to the passengers in the back. But also, well, look at this. You have another storage compartment down here and a secret storage compartment. Always a fan of those down at the bottom where you can stash, I don't know, some things you don't want people to see. I'll let you fill in the blanks on that one. The rest is pretty classic uh, General Motors material. I have a semi-analog uh, and semi-digital uh, gauge cluster. The gauges look vintage. It doesn't look modern at all. Again, $95,000, you would have expected maybe a fully digital dashboard, something you get in the Escalade. Um, but for the rest, standard switch gear, all my all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive uh, switch gear is here on the left. This is also where I can adjust the vehicle suspension accordingly. Now, infotainment system, that is an area where General Motors uh, uh, usually dominates uh, in the segment, and the Tahoe is no exception. Now, the screen is very tiny. That's one thing I find kind of weird. Again, for the price you're paying, you would have expected something a bit larger, but the interface is clear. The graphics look good, and it is a quick reacting system. I have nothing to say about this system. I can find the informa information quickly. Um, um, it's easy to configure my phone. It's easy to access the vehicle settings, and I have a slew of cool towing apps and cameras as well that will allow me to configure my truck for towing. For example, I have a towing menu right here, 
And this is gonna allow me to configure everything according to the trailer that I have. And the truck will really know, okay, I have a closed trailer, I have an open trailer, dual wheel, whatever, uh, and it'll adapt its settings accordingly, transmission mapping, so that you don't, you know, you don't end up in a crash or you don't break your trailer or whatever. All right, so now in the Nissan Armada. So like I was saying, this has been facelifted for the 2021 model year. It's still the old Armada with some updates. So as you probably noticed, the new front end, slightly revised exterior, revised interior. That really helped because the old Armada was getting really old. Uh, we have a new in, in, infotainment system, which I'll get to in a few minutes, and a revamped interior. It looks much better in here. However, seating position is really not as good as in the Tahoe. Actually, it feels like I'm sitting over the vehicle. It doesn't feel as enveloping. It really feels like I'm on top of it. Now, from a technical standpoint, the Armada is competitive. Um, it's powered by a 5.6 liter V8, uh, which has been slightly modified for 2021. A bit more horsepower, so 400 horsepower and 413 foot-pounds of torque. A bit less than in the Tahoe, but it is a slightly smaller vehicle as well. So power to weight uh, ratios are quite similar for both trucks. This is also body on frame, so it's like a pickup truck underneath. It comes with 4x4 high and 4x4 low as well, um, and it is also a rear bias vehicle. Um, it is uh, This engine is uh, made it to a 7-speed automatic gearbox compared to the 10-speed uh, gearbox in the Tahoe I just talked about. And pricing is lower for the Armada, which helps it. Uh, this is the fully loaded platinum model with the captain chair, so you can't get more loaded than this, and it sells for $76,000. So you're a good almost 20,000 less than the Chevy I just uh, compared it with. Okay, so overall presentation, like in the Tahoe, you're getting a semi-analog, semi-digital uh, gauge cluster. The information is well presented. The gauges themselves look kind of old, even if Nissan tried to update them. You're getting clear information from the menu in the center as well. However, um, contrary to the Chevy, which has its all-wheel drive modes on the left, everything is here in the center here for the Armada. I have this uh, knob right here that allows me to alternate between my drive modes. However, it does feel very flimsy. Look at this. Feel it? Hear it? So vastly improved infotainment system for 2021, just like the Nissan Pathfinder, there's a larger screen. So right off the bat, I'm getting more screen than the Tahoe for less money. It is a massively improved interface. I like Nissan's interfaces. They look kind of dated, but they operate well. There's good fluidity. The information is well presented. It's not too complicated. Yes, you do have to access some menus uh, when you want to do some configurations, but it's not painful. It's not that complicated to understand. After a few tries, you'll get familiar with this system very quickly. I also appreciate that there are some physical buttons, especially to tune uh, through the system. So I can actually, I don't need to use the touch controls. I can use this knob right here. Same with the standard volume knob. HVAC controls, it's the same story right here. Big buttons, very clear. So this is handy in winter. If you wanna operate your system with gloves on, you'll be able to do it with this Armada. So that's a nice feature from Nissan. Obviously, what these big guys are really good for is cargo space. They have the largest cargo space of any SUV. And the Tahoe, I'm actually the GM big boys right now dominate this category. Uh, one of the big improvements for 2021 is the rear independent suspension. Yes, finally, uh, they got rear of the torsion beam of the old model. So what that does is it, it frees a lot of space from underneath. So that allowed General Motors to lower the floor and also extend the rear to give it more cargo space. It's all electronic in Itahu. I just uh, hold down the button right here and the seat rests are gonna drop down to give me a nice flat floor for loading all the gear I need to load. Now there's also a compartment right underneath here. When I open it, however, I don't have that much storage, uh, just enough room for a winter brush, but that's about it. All right, so now on the Armada side, um, obviously the Armada is a bit of a shorter vehicle, so you're not going to get as much cargo space than in a Tahoe, but it's not that bad. This is also utilizing an independent rear suspension, so uh, you are going to free up a lot of space in the rear. Uh, I do like, uh, what I do like is behind this third row seat, there are some neat little compartments right here. Do you see that? It allows you to store some stuff. I don't know if you've got like some, some sheets of paper or some equipment. You can just shove it back there and it'll spring back up. That's pretty cool. Compartment down here as well. Uh, uh, but just like in the Tahoe, when I open it, I don't have that much uh, room. Um, I have enough space just for a few uh, tools or if I have some wet components or some fishing gear, I can throw it there. But there's not a lot of room down here. Uh, when I lift it, I have access to the spare tire tools. So again, full electronic controls here in the back for the Armada. It goes down a bit slower than in the Tahoe, but eventually one day we're going to get there. 
and we're going to arrive to a flat floor in three, two, one. There you go. So these being trucks obviously require that you step up one notch to get in, but you have a nice uh, sidestep to do it in the Tahoe. So coming in, uh, obviously a lot of room in these vehicles, even if this is the short a wheelbase version compared to the longer Suburban, I have plenty of room here in the second row. Now this is obviously the captain chair, so only two chairs. I can, I can equip it with the center console, it doesn't have it right now, or three uh, seats as well. I have screens as well, like in the Escalade that I reviewed this screen allows me to play with a slew of information. I can connect uh, in entertainment systems back here. I can even connect my own phone on the system in the back. I can give orders to my chauffeur if I want. I can play with the navigation system. So each passenger here in the back gets his own screen. All right, so to get to the back of a Tahoe, there are, there's a little procedure here on the side. There are two ways to adjust the, the second seat. I can pull it once and it lowers flat and I pull it one other time and it moves forward. Now, this is really cool because uh, it gives way to a lot of room when I want to get in and I have plenty of headroom as well. I'm a six foot tall guy. As you can see, I'm not too cramped. I can walk in the back. I can pull back on the seat, put it back in its position. So I have quite a lot of space back here. I have ample headroom, good leg room. I mean, there could be room for uh, a few more inches for the passenger in the front to move his seat forward. Another feature I like is if I want to get out, I don't have to reach at the bottom to grab a button or a lever. I have a cool little button right here. I press it once and boom, and I press twice. Not bad. So now the Armada, again, I have to climb to get in, but it is a bit lower, so it's not as hard to get inside. Ingress is pretty easy, but I do have to lower my head. The roof line isn't as high as in the towel. Once in the back, it is, uh, th those seats, I mean, compared to the Tahoe, they just feel hard. I'm sorry, Nissan, they're not as plush or as comfortable as what you get in the American alternative. But I do have plenty of leg room here in the front. Now, this is also the captain chair setup, but I have the gigantic center console here in the front. It looks fantastic. I have the same applique than I had in the front with a storage compartment. I have two extra uh, cup holders as well. And just like the American alternative, I have a screen, so each passenger has a screen however on this one I have USB ports right here but I don't have it on the seat here in the right however once you plug your phone there it can be transferred on this side or your uh, entertainment device or whatnot okay now time to climb in the third row of the Armada to get there I pulled this lever right here and before before you do it I recommend you pull away because once this seat starts going it's pretty intense there you go. So like the Tahoe, it gives me uh, access to a big space to get in. It is a lower vehicle, however, so I do have to bend to get in. I have to stay crouched. A bit more of a contortionist act, but it's not so bad. Sit back down, bring the seat up. Okay, this is a bigger seat than in the Chevy. All right, so this is what it looks like. Now, since I can't move this seat forward or back, I'm really stuck with this seating position. Um, I can, however, adjust my backrest electronically. The only way I can be comfortable is to have this low rider position. I can, however, lift the headrest to have a bit more comfort. It's not so bad. I mean, it's tighter than in the Tahoe, but I could live with this for a short trip. I recommend keeping this for the kids though. Two cup holders and I do not have any USB ports in the back. Now, how do I... Oh. All right, so here you have it, two full-size SUVs, one from Japan, one from the USA, that are quite competitive, even if the Armada is missing some new technologies. Now, this is obviously a more affordable alternative than the Chevrolet. You're getting almost the same amount of horsepower and you're getting a towing rating, which is actually a bit higher for the Armada, 8,500 pounds versus 8,300 pounds for the Tahoe. So that's interesting. However, will the Armada still be here for a while? I have no idea. Nissan isn't selling that many of them. But if you're looking for an alternative that isn't American in the full-size SUV segment, you're gonna be paying less for this Japanese big boy and you're gonna get quite a lot of capability. Full review is coming next.